If I think back to when I first got the Tigris Prime, there were two things that really surprised me about this weapon. First of all, it dealt a stupidly high amount of damage, essentially nothing would survive the Tigris Prime. And second of all, it was, and still is, an absolutely gorgeous weapon, even though the usability kinda trails a little bit behind it. Hey guys, welcome back, as always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this Mastery Rank 13 primary weapon. As per the usual, I got a build lineup for you, something cheap, something affordable, something that most players should be able to build. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player friendly approach, simply because there's a ton of information here and I want anybody watching to fully understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. With that out of the way, let's jump into the Tigris Prime. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped, and for that just a couple of free shots. The Tigris Prime is perhaps one of the most iconic weapons in Warframe, and for a stupid long amount of time it was perhaps the most powerful shotgun in Warframe, but it did have some ugly usability issues. And don't misunderstand, it's still an extremely powerful shotgun, and it still has some of those usability issues. Allow me to explain. As beautiful, as powerful and as fashionable as this weapon is, it has one major kink when it comes to usability and that's the duplex firing trigger system. From my own experience, with the duplex firing system you either love it or you hate it. You're gonna be able to fire off two shots in rapid succession and this means a whole lot of burst in your target. Take a look at how many pellets am I firing by default, so of course, it's gonna matter how much damage do those little pellets do and what kind of status effects am I gonna be applying to my target. You do get some degree of control over your um, trigger system, however. You can fire one shot, then keep the other shot locked in, keep your trigger finger pressed down and release when you're good and ready. So if you're more newer to Warframe and you just came across this absolutely gorgeous weapon, fear not, we're gonna make it pack one serious punch and it's fully capable of taking you through a whole lot of content that Warframe has to offer. But more on that a tad later, let's have a look at stats. My Tigris Prime has mod capacity 60 out of 60 and you're also gonna see this weird symbol here. Now this symbol is a, is a lens. I can't go further into this one without spoiling stuff so I will not. Don't worry, it doesn't affect the performance of the weapon. Mod capacity 60 out of 60, normally you get it with 30 out of 30, but you can install an Auroking Catalyst which will be doubling your mod capacity. You need an Auroking Catalyst if you want to get the most out of your weapon, there's simply no buts about it. You can pay 20 plat to have one installed, you can farm it from Nightwave, or you can get a blueprint from the Daily Sortie if you are quote unquote lucky. Yeah, you still gotta build it though, so there's that. My weapon has been formatted a total of two times, look at the number above the star, you go into actions, you select polarization and you're gonna be able to polarize the slot if you have a forma, you get your forma blueprints by opening relics and you still have to build them, so there's also that. My recommendation to you guys is to add a V symbol, depending on what kind of build you're gonna go for, normally with the Tigris Prime, one build kind of fits everything apart from Corpus, but even Corpus, more on that later. You can add a V symbol or two V symbols to your Tigris Prime, and I'll show you exactly what build you're gonna be using just a tad later. Accuracy 9.1, my friends, this is a shotgun, please use it as a shotgun, not a sniper. You're still gonna get some value out of it at medium range shots, but again, most value at super close range shots, go for the head. Critical chance, critical damage. Currently in Warframe, when it comes to primary weapons such as the Tigris Prime, critical chance is more important than status chance. Slightly because of one overpowered mod, but more on that some other time. Unfortunately for the Tigris Prime, or fortunately because basically this keeps it in balance, the critical chance as a base is only 10%. So if I want to amplify that using mods, this is a very important distinction. Blunderbuss, this is the critical chance mod for shotguns, we do not even have a prime version for this one, it's only 90% my friends, only 90%. Long story short, not worth it using mods, using outside buffs, using bonus additive after effects, yes definitely, but more on that again later. The critical multiplier is decent standard at 2.0x, the fall off between 10 and 20 meters, you're gonna start losing damage from 10 meters to 20, whereas the maximum loss of damage, again use it up close and personal. Fire rate of 2, magazine of 2, again duplex firing system, multi shot of 8, okay you're basically gonna be firing 8 pellets by default. Okay, so bear that one in mind. Eight little balls. It's very important to make that distinction. Noise alarming because, well, noise alarming, but we can take care of that. Riven disposition, one out of five. Now, 
Again, if you're more newer to Warframe, you might not know what the hell are these Rivens all about. They're very, very interesting. And a whole lot of players, a whole lot of uh, older players in Warframe make Rivens kind of their primary goal in Warframe. They're extremely powerful and they can be extremely annoying as well. Link in the cards right now if you want to learn everything about Rivens for the Tigris Prime. Because the disposition is only 1 out of 5, we're going to get very weak Rivens in terms of the amount of stats we're going to be getting. As you can see, I'm only getting 52%. Status chance with 45% critical chance. Needless to say, it's not really worth investing in a Riven for the Tigris Prime. Okay? If you want to spend something like 50 plat and roll it, I mean... Okay, but again, you don't really need to because in order to get a Riven that is actually worth using on your weapon, you're gonna have to get a pretty goddamn good roll. And those usually cost a whole lot of plat, so bear that one in mind. Status per projectile, we got 11.3% with the trigger duplex and the damage per projectile, my friends, okay, per projectile. Impact, puncture, slash, a total of 1500 damage. Impact 19.5, puncture 19.5, and slash, my friends, 156, so this is a slash-based weapon. Now, because critical chance is so low, we're going to be aiming at going straight for status chance, as much status chance as possible. And allow me to jump into a standard build. And we got a whole lot of damage with Prime Point Blank. And of course, some of you might not have this mod just yet. Simply go for the normal version, Point Blank. Now, in terms of performance, there is a pretty big difference between Point Blank and Primed Point Blank. From 90% damage all the way to 165%. This mod is obtained from Barokitir the Void Trader each and every single time he comes to town. I do a video on it really quick, 3-4 minutes. So, if you subscribe, you get to see when he brings Prime Point Blank. No problem whatsoever. Yes, you will need this mod eventually if you want to max out your weapons. But for up to level 100 in Warframe, you don't even need Prime point blank. So bear that one in mind. We also got a whole lot of multi shot on this weapon, so that means we're going to be firing multiple pellets. Again, we're back to multi shot 22.4 with Hell's Chamber, mandatory mod, and Vigilante Armaments, optional mod. Okay, it's a super cheap mod. That one, nobody should charge you more than 5 plat for it. You can go down to, down to Cetus and get it for yourself if you so desire. Now, I removed it because, again, it's optional. I'm going to give you a couple of additional options. We also got Sweeping Serration on the weapon. Now, Sweeping Serration adds 120% uh, slash damage. Remember the slash that we talked about earlier. And we're up to 908. Not just because of Sweeping Serration, but also because of Prime Point Blank, which will be increasing all the damage on the weapon. In the past, Multi-Shot on a weapon would also increase this damage here, and it would increase the status chance. However, this was a bit of a mistake. I mean, it was a bit of a roundabout way of actually showing how Multi-Shot works on weapons. If I am to remove Multi-Shot now, damage remains the same, status chance remains the same, but the Multi-Shot indicator, of course, will be going down. It's actually a pretty new change in Warframe, and I do enjoy it quite a lot. Okay, so we got more damage. Why did I choose Slash, however? Why not something else? Why not Impact, Puncture, Slash, or whatever else? Simply because Slash in Warframe currently is one of the most powerful... No, it's actually the most powerful uh, physical type. Impact, Puncture, Slash are called physical types. Heat and Viral are called elemental types, my friends, okay? There's a very clear distinction between the two. Why am I making a big deal out of it? Because in the past, Impact, Puncture, and Slash, the physical types, used to have a four times greater chance at applying a status effect over elemental types such as Heat, Viral, and so on and so forth. Not anymore. So IPS mods, such as Sweeping Serration, in the correct weapon, on the correct build, just became a whole lot more meaningful. So bear that one in mind. I also got on this weapon free 6060 mods. This is what we call 6060 mods, and these are the non expensive ones. We still have one more. It's called. What the hell is it called? Status. It's called Shell Shock. You can farm this one from the planet Nilgar, planet Ares, find all the free secret caches, then upon extraction. You got about a 5% chance of getting this one or getting the rifle version of this one. Eventually, you will be needing both, but for this build, Shellshock is not required whatsoever. Instead, we're going to be using the Toxin 6060, the Cold 6060, and the Heat 6060 mod. Together, they will combine. The Toxin will combine with the Cold, and they will form Vital Damage. Vital Damage currently in Warframe is one of the most powerful elemental combos that you can have. It's extremely bursty, it deals a whole lot of damage, it's absolutely fantastic. 
Heat in Warframe is perhaps one of the most powerful, no, it's, yeah, one of the most powerful, this one in Toxin, standalone effects, non-combo effects. Heat right now currently reduces armor in Warframe, and that's a pretty big deal, because usually the most tough, toughest targets in Warframe, as you will see, are the heavily armored targets, so we want to have a way to remove that armor. You have a couple of ways, you can use Heat, or you can use Corrosive. In the case of the Tigris Prime, the best idea, the best combo you can go for right now is Viral in combination with Heat. Now we got a bit more status on this weapon, we got Shotgun Savvy. This used to be a joke of a mod, an absolute garbage mod, but it was buffed recently and it gives 90% status chance. You have one additional option instead of Shotgun Savvy. You might say, hey, go for more status, add the last 60-60. Do not add the last 60-60 mod, because if you do that, you're gonna get a second elemental combo, which in our case, because we already got Viral, is gonna be Radiation. For what we're going for, this is not good, because Radiation will not help us with stripping armor. Heat, however, is more powerful as a standalone element than the combination of Radiation. If you're not going for some kind of weird setup with, I don't know, Nyx or perhaps Boobaron and try to mind control things and let them do damage between themselves. This is a whole lot more powerful than going for something like this or going for something like this. So bear that one in mind. And also Shell Shock is also expensive, so there's that. Now the last slot on this weapon, my friends, it's an option slot because you have a couple of options and I'm just gonna outline a few. multi shot. In terms of power, it's right up there with the best of them. This mod right here, this one is called Vigilante Armaments. Again, it's super cheap. You can get it down from Cetus. 60% multi-shot, of course. It's nowhere near the value of Hell's Chamber, but you still get a whole lot more pellets from 17.6 to 22.4. And you might be curious, how the hell am I firing 22.4 pellets, Lazar? This doesn't make any bloody sense. I'm not gonna cut a pellet in half, right? Basically, it works like this. Each and every single shot, it has a guaranteed... 22 pellets in it, and you also got a 40% chance at a 23rd pellet. You get it? It's pretty simple. From my humble point of view, this would be your base build. And again, if you don't have prime point blank, don't worry about it, my friend. Simply use the normal version instead. Yes, there is quite the power gap between these two, but there you go. There's that to keep in mind. Instead of this one, you also got a couple of extremely powerful options. Allow me to introduce Blaze. This is a fantastic shotgun mod. If you don't have it, you get it by doing nightmare missions. Don't worry, they're not that hard. Just go for it with your friends. It's gonna be fine. Don't have any friends? Uh, go public and pray to God. I don't know. 60% damage and 60% heat. Now, this pound for pound adds a whole lot of damage to basically any shotgun in Warframe. The problem with using it on the Tigris Prime in this specific combination is the fact that it adds a bit more heat than I would like. It's gonna depend on who exactly am I shooting. If I'm gonna be shooting Corrupted Heavy Gunners, for example, or perhaps Armored Targets, I would want some more heat, more heat procs, and I'll explain exactly the priority in a second. The 60% damage is good anyway. If you want something a bit more neutral that won't mess with your proc priority, you want to go for Vicious Spread. Yes, this will uh, nuke down the accuracy to 5.7, but again, it's a shotgun, my friends. Use it as a shotgun. This is my recommendation to you guys. Mm. Now, let's explain proc priority. Right now, it's pretty clear, right? So, if all of them, in terms of prior, are equal one to one, then prior number one is going to be Slash will 1200. Prior number two is going to be Vital, and then we have Heat and Puncture and uh, Impact, which in this case, we don't really care that much about. Heat will be removing armor, and it also is going to be doing a bit of damage, not a whole lot, but still, Vital right now in Warframe is just, it's crazy. It's extremely powerful. And again, for the Tigris Prime, yes, we're not using Corrosive, we're gonna go for something like this. I forgot about the Weapon Excellence mod slot. Yes, this mod slot does not matter. If you're new in Warframe, don't even freaking unlock this one. It's mostly pointless. But if you want some lols, you can go with Silent Battery. Reduces the chance an enemy will hear gunfire by 100% with the Tigris Prime. So, there's that. Again, that one's optional, you don't really need anything. We're gonna be checking Mesa's build because we make we wanna make sure we're not gonna be cheating with any Warframe buff. So we're gonna go to an empty build. And we're going to be spawning in a bunch of targets, not just heavily armored targets. We're going to go Ancient Healer Eximus, Elite Crewman Eximus, and Corrupted Heavy Gunner. Basically, these are representatives of the three major factions. There's also the Sentience, but that's a talk for another time. Shall we begin with Corpus and their shield gating? Corpus now in Warframe have shield gating. Wow, they're so much tougher than they were before because, well, yeah, no they're not. 
Of course, there are tougher targets than this, but still. And you might say, hey man, you went for a headshot and shield gating does not apply, all your damage spilled over. Okay, you don't want me to shoot him and he... Uh, how about this? Is that fine? Okay, we're not gonna go for a headshot. As you can see, Corpus still melt without much of an issue. So Corpus are not much of a threat in terms of how to kill them. They don't require a whole lot of power on your part to kill them. Corpus are difficult because of other reasons. They're extremely agile, they're more mobile, they deal a whole lot more damage than other factions. So a little bit of crowd control versus Corpus goes a long way. Also, if you wanna cater your weapon versus Corpus enemies, Factor in building gas or toxin on it as an elemental. Next, nice. let's have a look at these, uh, what are these again? Oh yeah, the infested. If I am, to, wow, it ducked. If I am to go for a headshot, of course, I'm going to be completely annihilating these Eximuses. I think they're ancient healers and all whatnot. As you can see, absolute carnage and destruction. And no, I don't necessarily need to go for a headshot. You're going to be destroying these targets without any sorts of issue whatsoever. Especially since you have viral. Now we're up to the Corrupted Heavy Gunner, and they still are some of the most toughest targets in Warframe, and the reason for that is their health bar is orange, which means they have armor. In our case, Ferrite Armor, which is weak to Corrosive, will be taking 75% extra damage from Corrosive. But in the case of the Tigris Prime, it's a whole lot better to go with Heat and Viola. We're gonna go for straight up headshots. Now we're gonna have a chance to actually look at the procs. 10 slashes, 2 heats, 1 Viral. Beautiful. Absolutely freaking amazing. Now, if you're not a new player in Warframe, and you're more of a veteran, you know that recently we had a whole bunch of changes. Basically, what you guys need to understand is that these Corrupted Heavy Gunners level 120 are not even close in toughness to the old Corrupted Heavy Gunners because of the way armor scales now. They reduced armor scaling extremely, extremely drastically. But again, as you can see, the Tigris Prime can 100% wreck. It's still a slash based weapon, but the viral does a whole lot of burst damage as well. When it comes to index targets, my friends, keep in mind that nowadays slash doesn't go through shield, doesn't ignore shields. It used to be so it ignores shields and goes straight for health. Not anymore, but the Tigris Prime has more than enough burst damage just to simply bypass it to go through it. Again, Corpus are not that tough, even with shield gating. As for my Corrupted Heavy Goons, no, they're not as tough as before, but my Tigris Prime is not as tough as it used to be. Doesn't deal as much damage, so overall, it's gonna feel mostly the same. <laughs> I know, basically, I think that's what the developer was after. Again, the weapon isn't nowhere near what it could do before, because, again, I used to be able to proc like 22 slashes, or, okay, fine, I'm exaggerating, like 18 slashes per shot. Okay, now I average just a couple. Take a look. What are that? Two shots in the target, only four slashes. See? But it doesn't really matter if the targets are a whole lot more weaker. Basically, weapon power gone down, Wep uh, enemy toughness has gone down as well. So bear that one in mind. Now, they did try to increase the toughness when it comes to corpus enemies and uh, uh, make the infested a bit more dangerous. But overall, my friends, they're still pretty much in the same ballpark. As for the Tigris Prime, this is the base build I'm recommending for you with the small mentions that I have already made. Don't have Prime Point Blank, use the normal version. It's still extremely powerful, okay? Is it the best shotgun in Warframe? Nope, not by a long shot, not anymore, but it's still definitely worth building and considering the MR requirement on the Tigris Prime is probably one of the most powerful primaries that you can come across at that low MR level. Now, there's one more thing that I like to do in my guides. Bump up everything with Warframe buffs. That was just the weapon on itself, totally. But if I factor in some Warframe buffs, especially considering now that the enemies are a tad weaker, let's showcase the ever so lovely Lady Mirage Prime. I don't like this fashion. This is my first fashion for her. Okay, there we go. Look at that. That is a whole lot better. Let's have a look at Mirage Prime. She's going to be using Corrosive Projection. This will be reducing enemy armor by 18%, my friends. This is a brand new Corrosive Projection against Grenier. It's extremely powerful. We're also going to be using two Arcanes. Arcane Rage R5. On headshot, you got a 15% chance plus 180% damage to primary weapons for 24 seconds. And the second one will be Arcane Avenger. Hmm, on damage, 21% chance for 45% critical chance for 12 seconds. Now, this critical chance does not apply to the base 10% of my weapon. It's simply on top of it. So, when this one procs, I'm gonna go to 55% crit chance. Unfortunately, Arcane's no longer double stack because fun is not allowed sometimes in Warframe. So, there's that. If I'm going to get 
that amount of critical chance, 55%, then it's worth going for just a little bit of critical damage. And you might ask, okay, what am I gonna give up on? Because all of these mods are awesome. Well, we're gonna have to give up on Vicious Spread and go for a little bit of critical damage. With Prime Ravage, 110% critical damage, boosting my critical multiplier to 4.2x. Now, this weapon can go absolutely nuclear for the power of Lady Mirage Prime. Uh, let's unpause the targets. Let's leave the corrupted heavy goons because these are the most tough. We can increase the level if you wish. Increasing the level now, past level 75, 80, to be honest, doesn't make that big of a difference anymore as it used to because of how uh, armor scales nowadays, okay? So therefore, effective hit points are a whole lot lower than before. But let's go to 150. Again, we should unpause them so they can hit me and I can get me buffs. There we go. You guys ready? Come and get me. We're gonna be using Mirage's free ability for a fantastic damage increase as well as our ever so lovely clones. Now take a look at my Arcane Avenger proccing all the time. I got my clones. Of course, of course it's gonna be a one shot. What did you guys expect? Now when you're going for something like this, I would suggest you tend to the weapon's functionality issues as well, especially when it comes to that optional slot in the weapon. You guys remember we have an optional slot there that I'm using critical damage right now. You can go for something like Chilling Reload and adding Chilling Reload will increase the uh, basically the usability on this weapon by a whole lot. Chilling Reload also adds a bit of cold so it will increase the chance of uh, vital procking. So bear that one in mind as well when you're trying to balance out your elements and all whatnot. Sometimes you'll want more burst damage. If you want more burst straight off the gate, especially against targets which are not armored, it's better to increase your vital damage. If you want a more staggered damage effect, especially good versus heavily armored targets, then I suggest you increase your, your chance to proc slash. As for our conclusion to the Tigris Prime, well, it may not be the queen of shotguns anymore, but it's still one hell of a weapon and it packs one serious punch. Getting this amount of power at that low MR is definitely worth it and I highly recommend you giving this weapon a shot. One thing though, make sure you can get along with the duplex trigger system and if you don't like the duplex trigger system, well then I got plenty of other weapons for you to try. As always, my name is Blazar. thank you guys so much for watching, like, share, share and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. If you got any sorts of feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, let me know what weapons would you guys like to see next. Everything is on the table except melee. Why not melee? Because, well, there's still no melee 3.0. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content, consider supporting us via Patreon. Until next time, my friends. Buh bye bye